<clears throat> this reading gonna come from the Pro Se Handbook, December 27, 2023. Information on filing a lawsuit in federal court without a lawyer. United States District Court for the Western District of Louisiana. <clears throat> this handbook is not intended for prisoners who file civil rights suits or petitions for habeas corpus. The clerk of court can provide special forms to be used in those kinds of cases. Got the table of content. <laughs> First part is welcome. Welcome to the United States District Court for the Western District of Louisiana. We have prepared this handbook for persons who are self-represented, often referred to as, as pro se in a federal civil lawsuit. This handbook provides you with basic information that will assist in the decision-making process and in the filing, filing of a civil lawsuit, you should not re rely entirely on this handbook, which has space for describing only basic and general procedures. Rather, this handbook is a starting point to help you if you choose to file a lawsuit and represent yourself. Representing yourself means that you are responsible for following the uh, federal rules of civil procedure, the court's local laws, and the court's standing orders, all of which are located on the court's website at www.lawd.uscourts.gov. The court's website also provides a guide to practice that has more detailed information than this handbook. <clears throat> you have a right to represent yourself. You do not have to have an attorney, but we strongly encourage you to try to obtain legal representation. <clears throat> there are some organizations in Louisiana that provide free legal services for to low-income residents to find a legal aid office near you, contact the Louisiana State Bar Association at 800-421-5722 or the Louisiana Civil Jur uh, Justice Center at 800-310-7029. Other sources for legal services and lawyer referrals include the Cadiana Legal Service Corporation, I just do the one in Lafayette, which is 337-237-7320. That's Lafayette. <clears throat> and they also got the Lafayette Bar Association Volunteer Lawyers, 337-237-4700. This list is not <clears throat> exhaustive. Additional resources may be found on the internet or through a local bar association. If you have questions or need to know more about the law, it is up to you to research the answers yourself while employees of the clerk of court can answer certain questions about court procedures. They cannot give legal advice or suggest a course of action. You may not call the judge or the judge's staff to ask for legal advice on how to pursue your case or to argue your position. <clears throat> Alternatives to filing a lawsuit. Bringing a lawsuit takes a considerable amount of time, money, and energy. Before filing a lawsuit, you may want to consider other alternatives attempting to work things out, consider talking with or writing directly to the person you think is responsible for causing your problem. If you approach someone respectfully and give him or her a real opportunity to talk, that person may be more likely to respond in a positive manner than if you first contact 
after the problem arises is a lawsuit, file a small claims court suit. In some cases, you may have the option of filing a small, uh, a case in small claims court, which is designed to you to be used by self-represented people. These courts are part of the Louisiana state, not federal court system. For more information on small claim court, contact the city court or justice of the peace near you. Five questions to answer before you file a lawsuit. There are some important questions to consider before you file a lawsuit in this court. If you cannot answer yes to each of the questions, it is unlikely that you will be to prevail in a lawsuit in this court. If you cannot, if you can answer yes to all questions except number one or two, you should consider filing your suit in another court. Even if you answer yes to all five questions and you believe you should prevail in your lawsuit, that does not mean that you will do so. It means only that you meet some preliminary requirements. Please answer the questions before filing a lawsuit in this court. Jurisdiction. Is federal court or state court the proper place to file my lawsuit? Venue. Is the Western District of Louisiana the proper federal court for my lawsuit? Statute of limitations. Is my lawsuit filed within the time allowed? Exhaustion. Have I pursued administrative remedy before filing my lawsuit? Defenses. I am, am I able to identify and locate the proper defendant for my lawsuit? <clears throat> Jurisdiction. Is federal court or state court the proper place to file my lawsuit. There are two court systems in the United States, the state court system and the federal court system. The state court are the courts of general jurisdiction, which means that they can hear and decide almost any kind of legal controversy. Louisiana state court typically hear cases relating to civil, such as personal injury or breach of contract domestic, divorce, and child custody, and proper matters, and property matters. Federal court have limited jurisdiction and may handle only certain types of cases, categories of cases that the federal court may hear, or one cases brought under the federal statute, such as federal civil rights and employment discrimination laws. Two cases where the parties or citizens of different states, and the dispute concerns more than $75,000. And three cases where the United States is a party, such as a suit against the Postal Service or an appeal on a Social Security benefit claim. If your case does not fall within one of these categories, it may be the state court, not federal court, is the proper place to bring your case. Venue is the Western District of Louisiana, the proper federal court for my lawsuit. <clears throat> if you decide a federal court has jurisdiction to hear your kind of lawsuit, you may next determine which federal court is the proper place or venue to file the suit. There are three federal district courts in Louisiana, Eastern District, the New Orleans area, Middle District, which is the Baton Rouge area, and Western District, which is the rest of Louisiana. Generally, you may only file a lawsuit in the Western District if, one, the defendant resides in the district, or two, the event that gives rise to your lawsuit happen within the boundaries of the Western District. The Western District is divided into five divisions. Parties are not entitled to choose the division for their lawsuit. The clerk of court will assign a lawsuit to the proper division. The five divisions are uh, Alexandra, 
which is Avoys, Paris, Calcasieu, Concordia, Grant, LaSalle, uh, Natchitoches, uh, Rapids, and Winsboro, or Wynn, Lafayette at St. Martin, Acadia, Evangeline, Iberia, Lafayette, St. Martin, St. Landry, and Vermilion. Lake Charles, Allen, Beauregard, Calcasieu, Cameron, Jefferson, Davis, and Vernon. Then Monroe, Caldwell, East Carroll, Franklin, Jackson, Lincoln, Madison, Morehouse, Washita, Richland, Tinsaw, Union, and West Carroll. Shreveport is uh, Bienville, Bossier, Caddo, Claiborne, DeSoto, Red River, Sabine, and Webster. Statue of limitation is my lawsuit filed within the time allowed. Usually a claim must be filed within a certain period of time after the injury occurs or is discovered. The rule is called the statute of limitation or under Louisiana law, the uh, prescriptive period. The length of the statute of limitation vary depending on the type of claim. For example, most personal injury and civil rights claim in Louisiana must be filed within one year of the accident or event and breach of contract case have a 10 year prescribed prescriptive period. An appeal of a final decision of the commissioner of social security must generally be filed within 60 days after you receive the final decision. There are many other period, periods of limitation that apply to various kinds of claim. It is your responsibility to determine which applies to your case and act within the time allowed. This may require you to do some legal research. You should be certain that the statute of limitation has not expired before you file a lawsuit. Exhaustion. You have pursued administrative remedies before filing a lawsuit. You sometimes must pre present your claim to all levels of review by a state or federal agent before you can properly file a lawsuit in federal court. This is called exhaustion of administrative remedies. Example of claims where exhaustion is often required are one employment discrimination suits against a current or former employer, two an appeal from a denial of social security benefits or other challenge to a decision by the federal agent and three a suit under the federal tort claim act for personal injury or damage caused by a federal employee who to sue am i able to identify locate the proper defendant for my lawsuit before you sue a person named as a defendant, you should be confident that the defendant is the person or company that engaged in the wrongful conduct that caused you harm or is otherwise legally responsible for the harm. You must also be able to provide an address where the defendant can be served with your lawsuit. You must be able to list a defendant by his actual name. Do not sue groups of people such as the personal, a personnel department, the sheriff's department, and the medical staff. You cannot pursue a lawsuit against John Doe or John Doe or Jane Doe defendants for a corporation or other business, you must be able to provide the company's complete and actual name. You may know a business as Burns Timber, but its full name may be Burns Timber Management Inc. You must provide the complete name in your lawsuit. You may be able to find 
a business's complete name at the Louisiana Secretary of State Online Corporation database start at HTTP uh, forward slash forward slash www.sos.la.gov forward slash <clears throat> filing your lawsuit if you still want to file a lawsuit in the Western District after answering the questions asked above, the information provided below will guide you in the initial steps. Write your complaint. The first step is for you to file a complaint. The complaint tells the court who you are suing, what your case is about, and what you want the court to do about it. The complaint and all other filings must be typed or nearly handwritten on uh, eight and a half by 11 inch letter size white paper. Type or write on one side of the paper only and leave at least a one inch margin at the top, bottom, and both sides. A one inch margin all the way around. The first page begins with a case caption, which includes identifying information above your case. Below is a sample caption. All right. Uh, the clerk of court will assist a case number or civil action number the division, a judge, and a magistrate judge. You should include that information, especially the case number, in the caption of every paper you file after the complaint. Okay. First page begin with the case caption. All right, the clerk of court will assign, well, I read that, each paragraph of the complaint must be numbered. I'm gonna start over. Each paragraph of the complaint must be numbered. Paragraph number one should provide your name and address. For example, the plaintiff in, the, in this case is Morgan Smith, is, who is a citizen of Louisiana and whose mailing address is Blase Blase. Paragraph number two should provide the name and address of the defendant if there is more than one defendant lists each defendant's name and address in separate additional paragraphs. Paragraph number three should give a short and plain statement of the grounds for the court's jurisdiction. For example, this court has jurisdiction over this civil action because the plaintiff's claims arise under federal law, the age discrimination in employment act or this court has jurisdiction over the civil action because the plaintiff and the defendant are citizens of different states and the amount of controversy exceeds $75,000. You should then explain in numbered paragraphs the facts behind your lawsuit. You should provide enough details so the judge and the defendant can understand what your issues are. Be clear and understandable. Do not try to sound like a, a lawyer. Uh, some, kinds of, some kinds of claims entitled the plaintiffs, some kinds of claims entitled the plaintiff to request that they be decided by a jury rather than a judge alone. If you would like to request a jury, you should write, I want a jury, I want a trial by jury. 
in your complaint. You should also add to the caption of the complaint jury trial demanded. In the last paragraph of the complaint, state the relief you are seeking from the court. For example, a plaintiff might ask the court to order the defendant to pay the plaintiff money for lost wages and medical bills, and the plaintiff might ask the court to issue an injunction that requires a defendant to stop trespassing on his land, uh, protect protect privacy, court filings are open to the public, so you generally should not include in your complaint or other filings personal information such as social security number, date of birth, financial account numbers, names of children, or other information that should be kept private. If you must refer to such information, list only the last four digits of the number, the year of birth only, and the children's initial, or the child's initial. Finally, you must sign your complaint. You should also type or print your name, address, and phone number below your signature. This signature block and your signature must appear on every paper you file with the with the court in accordance with rule 11 of the federal rule of civil procedure and rule 11.1 .1 of the local rules of, for the western district of louisiana your signature is your uh, representation to the court that the complaint or other filing is not uh, presented for an improper purpose such as harassment, the legal claim claims are warranted by law, and the facts alleged can be supported by evidence. A violation of that representation may result in sanctions, including an order that you pay money as a penalty or to reimburse the defendant's attorney fee. <clears throat> File complaint with the clerk of court filing fee. You will need to you will need to complete a silver cover sheet to go with your complaint. The form JS44 and instructions can be found on the clerk's website, on the court's website, in the forms sanction under national forms, silver forms, or the clerk of court can provide you a copy. The filing fee for filing the complaint is 450. The fee must be paid at the time of filing by check or money order payable to clerk of court, cash or credit card. If you cannot afford to pay the filing fee, you may be allowed to have the filing fee waived if you fill out an application for leave to proceed in form of purpose. The form is available on the court's website or, form, or from the clerk of court. If you file the application, the clerk of court will send the paperwork to the judge who will decide whether you are eligible for the free waiver. If the judge denies the application, you must pay the filing fee to have your case proceed to file your complaint. You will need to deliver to the clerk of court either by mail or in person, but not by fax to any divisional office uh the following signed complaint silver cover sheet 405 dollars filing fee or application for leave to proceed in form of porpoise visitors to the courthouse must present a photo id and may bring an electronic device including a cell phone into any courthouse in the western district subject to the conditions set forth 
and SO 1.93 effective on September 10th, 2021, which can be found on the court's website or www.lawd.uscourts.gov under court rules, standing orders. Visitors are not allowed to bring any kind of weapon inside the courthouse. Serving a complaint. Your next step is to serve each defendant with the complaint and a summons within 90 days of the filing of the lawsuit. Otherwise, your case may be dismissed. This requirement may be met by one, having the defendant waive service or two, making service of process. Each method is described below. Waive of service, you may request that a non-government defendant waive service of the lawsuit by sending a notice of lawsuit and a request for waiver of service of summons form AO398 along with a copy of your complaint by first class mail or other reliable means. You must also include two copies of the waiver of service of summons uh, form AO399 and a self-addressed postage prepaid return envelope. See Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 4D. If the defendant signs the waiver form and returns it to you, you must file it with the court. If the defendant does not waive service, you must proceed with service of process as described below. If you are suing the United States, the federal agency, a state agency, or a local government, you cannot use this method and must arrange for service of process. Service of process, a summons is a document that notify the defendant of the commencement of your lawsuit and the requirement that he respond to the complaint. A defendant is served when he is delivered a summons and a copy of, a, of the complaint. The clerk of court will send you a summons for each defendant. You must complete the summons form and make a copy then arrange to have one copy served along with a copy of the complaint on the defendant the person who makes service must be at least 18 and cannot be a party to the case service on an individual defendant is typically done by hand delivery to the defendant or by leaving the papers at the defendant's usual place of residence with a person of suitable age and discretion. The person who makes service should fill out the proof of service section on one copy of the summons and file it with the clerk of court. Service on a corporation or other business entity is typically done by delivering the papers to the company's agent for service of process. The name and address of a company's agent for service can often be found in the Louisiana Secretary of State's online corporation database. Start at <clears throat> http colon forward slash forward slash www dot sos dot la dot gov forward slash pages forward slash default dot aspx the person who makes service should fill out the proof of service section on one copy of the summons and this should be filed in your case if the complaint is an appeal from a decision by the commissioner of social security the supplemental rules for social security action under 
42 USC section 405G effective December 1st, 2022, no longer require the plaintiffs to serve a summons and complaint under federal rules of civil procedure for once a social security case has been filled or filed, the court will notify the commissioner of the com commencement of the action by transmitting a notice of electronic filing to the appropriate office within the social security administration's office of general counsel and to the united states attorney for the uh district where the action is filed if the complaint has no has not filed if the complaint was not filed electronically the court must notify the plaintiff of the transmission for service on other government agents agencies for service on other government agencies and for other methods of making service see federal rules of procedure four service by u.s marshal if you have been granted permission to proceed in form of porpoise without paying the filing fee, then you may file a motion that asks the court to have your complaint served by U.S. Marshal. If the court orders service by the U.S. Marshal, you must provide the marshal with a copy of the complaint, the completed summons, and a completed USM 285 form available from the clerk of court for each defendant. You are also responsible for providing in your paperwork a correct address for the defendant or its agent for service. After your lawsuit has been filed, once the defendant has received service of process, he must generally file the answer. He must generally file an answer within 21 days. Although courts often allow additional time, the answer is the defendant's formal written response to the complaint. A defendant may also respond by filing a motion to dismiss or other motion. Once an action is filed by each defendant, the court will usually issue a scheduling order that acts that sets forth a timeable with deadlines for the parties to follow failure to meet the deadlines in a scheduled order may result in a dismissal of your case the presiding judge magistrate judge or clerk of court may also issue other case management orders from time to time requiring in these orders must also be met in a timely fashion. <clears throat> the scheduling order will usually allow some time for discovery, disposition, uh, interrogatories, requests for production, etc. The procedural steps related to discovery or too detailed to cover in this handbook so you will need to conduct research and familiarize yourself with the rules on those matters a defendant will often ask to take a disposition of a plaintiff and other witnesses a disposition is a meeting usually in a lawyer or court reporter's office where the plaintiff or witness is placed under oath and asks questions about the lawsuit or lawsuit. There is no judge present. The testimony is recorded. Self-represented plaintiffs are sometimes reluctant to practice in the disposition, but they are obligated to do so, and their case may be dismissed if they refuse to testify uh plaintiff also may also take dispositions 
He will be responsible for hiring a court reporter, uh, subpoenaing the witness, and taking the other steps required by law, and even a pauper plaintiff must pay the related expenses after discovery is complete and sometimes often earlier, even earlier, the defendant may file a motion. The defendant may file a motion for a summary judgment and ask the court to dismiss your case on the grounds that there is not enough evidence to warrant a trial. You will be given an opportunity to respond to such a motion by filing a memorandum which presents the law and facts you believe support your case and supporting evidence. The judge may require the parties to file a pretrial order. As the pretrial date approaches, the pretrial order is a document signed by all parties that outlines the positions of the parties and lists their trial witnesses and exhibits. The judge will usually provide details instructing or uh, detailed instructions and a deadline for filing. It is important for the plaintiff to work with the defendant's attorney to prepare and timely file the pretrial order. The judge may hold a pretrial conference where the parties meet with the judge in person or by phone to discuss the pretrial order and talk about any final issues before the trial. If the case proceeds to trial, you will be responsible for subpoenaing your witnesses ahead of time. You will also need to know the rules for admitting evidence, questioning, and cross-examining witnesses and, other, or, and otherwise conducting a trial. You may appeal a final judgment of this court by filing a notice of appeal form available on the clerk's website or from the clerk of court with the clerk of court the deadline is generally 30 days after the entry of the judgment the filing fee is 505 dollars you may file a motion to waive a fee if you are a pauper the appeal will be heard by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal in New Orleans. The appeals court will base the decision on the copy on a copy of the district court record or written briefs from the parties. Come back other important information.